Hey Canucks fans, it's time for another edition of Ask Me Anything. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter, I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram, I'm the founder of the GLCBC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take, all in one take, it's Clay's Canucks commentary for Sunday, November the 29th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. I hope you're having a good weekend. I'm excited because tonight, for the first time in three weeks, I'll be bowling in my Sunday night league. Opening things up once again, of course, we'll be wearing masks, no fist bumps or high fives. Uh, we'll be physically distancing ourselves or as some people like to say, socially distancing. And I, I joked around when the bowling leagues got shut down a few weeks ago, actually, that some bowlers aren't exactly the most social guys in the, in the, and social people in the first place. So physical or social distancing shouldn't be that difficult. But regardless, I'm excited to be bowling tonight and I'll be sure to update you, even if you don't want an update in tomorrow's vlog. And don't forget my live streams, I moved them from Sunday nights to Monday night, so I'll see you tomorrow night, hopefully at 10 p.m. right here on YouTube for my weekly live stream. Okay, today's Ask Me Anything. I got seven really good questions, six or seven really good questions yesterday from you all, all here on YouTube, and therefore I wanna get right into it and, uh, and, and start answering these questions. The first one is Joseph King says, when does the season start, training camp, and for how long, how many games will you played? Neutral site supply. So some really good questions there. A couple of these things I've touched on already in my vlogs over the past couple of weeks, but I think January 1 now is not realistic. That's what the NHL and the NHLPA wanted, but they're, um, among many things, the two big sticking points are escrow, how much will the players have to contribute this season, and salary deferral, how much will they have to defer, how much of their salary will they have to defer until revenues, attendance, and all those things start getting back to normal. Now what's tricky is they did negotiate something back in July when it was time to return to play and it, uh, but things the world has changed. The world has not gotten any better. So I think there's got to be give and, give and take on both sides, but we're going to have to monitor it and, and see what happens. But I, I think we're looking more like a January 15th start date because you really need five weeks to prepare because um, um, let's say the season starts on January 15th. You need a week or so, uh, or a week and a half of preseason games, and then a week and a half of training camp. So there's three weeks there already, and then you need another two weeks prior to that for players from out of the country to quarantine. So you're looking at least a minimum of five weeks, given today is November 29. January 1, to me, is not realistic. So I'm, I'm looking at January 15th as a potential start date. For how long? I think they want to go between somewhere between 48 and 60 games. And then um, all the way until the end of April, start of May, so they can do two months of playoffs and then be done by July 15 when the Olympics start. Neutral sites, I don't know. I think they're going to try and go home arenas, but they're going to group them differently, i.e. Canadian division and then three other divisions. So we'll see what happens, but thank you for that question, Joseph. Eli says this, would you prefer the team to remain in the Pacific division or be realigned to the Canadian division? In which division do you think the team will fare better? It's funny, um, I want them in a Canadian division, although I think it's going to be tougher for them. So hear me out. Um, I, I would love to see them play against Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa more than twice a season, right? Home and home. And, uh, you know, we're going to get Calgary, Edmonton, no matter what, because they're, they're in our division. So uh, I like the matchups from a Toronto, Montreal. Uh, you got, got to see Ottawa six times or whatever. But, um, and then we're going to get, like I said, Calgary, Edmonton anyways. And then Winnipeg, we will see them a tiny bit more, even though they're in our Western Conference usually. Um, I prefer that uh, to a Pacific Division where then we're watching, you know, the three California teams I'm not really interested in right now. And then there's Calgary, Edmonton again. Arizona, I'm not really interested in right now. And then Vegas is always good because especially coming off the playoff run. So I actually think that the Canucks would do better in a Pacific Division because the only team for sure better than the Canucks would be Vegas. And then we'd be fighting with Calgary and Edmonton. Uh, and then I think the Canucks are better than Arizona and the three California teams. So in a Pacific Division, I could see uh, Vancouver finishing third. Let's just say for argument's sake behind uh, Vegas and Calgary and then say Vancouver, then Edmonton. That would be the top four. Whereas in the Canadian division, they'll finish third or fourth. I think you're looking at um, Toronto would be up there. They always do well in the regular season at least. And then I think Calgary and Montreal, uh, Calgary would be number two. And then Montreal and Vancouver would fight for three, four, along with Edmonton and actually and Winnipeg. So I think there's more variables in, in a Canadian division. And I wouldn't mind seeing it for one season at least. But if, if we get smoked and we end up near the bottom with Ottawa, then maybe we, um, I'll, I'll vote for Pacific Division again. But uh, for one season, for an unprecedented season, this upcoming season, I wouldn't mind seeing the Canucks play in a Canadian division. David says this, David Arthur, 
Uh, who is your second favorite NHL team? Great question, David. Uh, I think those of you that have been following me for a little while, you know who my second favorite team is. So I'll give you three seconds in your head to say it out loud. Three, two, one. Okay, if you said the Winnipeg Jets, you would have been correct. They are my second favorite team. I've been to the city a couple times to do some speaking for the church. My, um, I, I like Connor Hollebuck a lot, and I like a lot of their players. And my cousin Dusty also was the Winnipeg Jets goaltending development coach. He did that for two years before spending four years in the LA um, organization. So I, and he worked with Hollebuck and Michael Hutchinson back in the day. So I do like uh, Winnipeg as my second favorite team. And if anyone was asking, the Tampa Bay Lightning are my third favorite team. Not just because they won the Stanley Cup. They, I've, I like Stamkos. I like Vasilevsky. I like Hedman. So Tampa's always been my third favorite team behind Vancouver and Winnipeg. Debut Hunter says this, I saw an article predicting our lines and saw one with Mott on the second line with Pearson and Horvat. First, I was like, oh, wow. And then thought, he's a great pressure and forecheck player. And as you mentioned, also has a promising offensive game. Obviously higher than he should be, but could it actually work for team structure? Uh, Debut Hunter, thank you. Uh, the, good question. Thank you for acknowledging that. I know you've watched my vlogs because uh, for you to reference that, I've always said that at least get Tyler Mott from the fourth line to the third line. He's got offensive skill. We saw a bit of that in the playoffs. And I simply think he needs a, a chance to just show off some of his offensive ability. But I would cap it at the third line. I don't see him being a second line player. Um, and yeah, I, you know, considering if the Canucks don't make any more changes, I say you put Vertanen or Erickson in that spot. Um, and then you still have Pat Colson coming later in the season. But I think if Tyler Mott to go from the fourth line to regular third line shift, that would be enough for me. Uh, maybe you put him in the second line in spurts or if someone's in penalty trouble or injured or whatever that, that might be, you might try it. But I don't think that's a permanent spot for him. And you simply, it's not about money, but you simply don't have second liners making only 1.2 million or whatever Mott's making. But I, I could see him progressing to that, but I wouldn't jump him up to the second line right away. Yes, he's a great four checker. He's responsible defensively. He works his butt off, good skater. But um, I would love to see him on a third line, a really high energy third line, instead of uh, relying on him to score. But I would love to be proven wrong. Maestro, uh, do you think Elias Pettersson is capable of scoring 50 goals in a season? Yes, he has the ability to. He definitely has the talent to. But I don't think it will happen. I simply, uh, for a couple of reasons, I, I think it's tough for anyone to be a 50 goal scorer. Um, you know, in a non-COVID year, of course, you're not going to score 50 goals in a 60 game season. But could you score 50 goals in a two game season? Yeah, there it's not doesn't happen as often now. But I I think the Canucks overall just simply aren't that offensive of a team, and and they got other guys that can score like J T Miller, like Bo Horvat, and like Brock Besser. So uh, all to say, the scoring I think would be a little bit more spread out. And you wouldn't just have Pedersen, uh, you know, pumping in all the goals for the team. Just think of the first power play unit, for example. You could see Hughes, Miller, Besser, or Horvat all getting their share of goals as well. So, yes, I think he has the talent to do so. Um, but I, I'm not sure how realistic that is. You, but your question was, do you think Pedersen is capable of scoring 50? Absolutely, yes. He's capable of scoring 50. I'm just not convinced it's going to happen. Jed Lawson, bowling friend. A uh, chance that Canucks pair a top prospect with either Erickson or Sutter for a decent return. Possibly someone to play with Bo. If yes, who would be the realistic player from around the league that you want to say see play with Bo? Okay, so is there a chance? Yeah, but it's a very low chance. I don't think the Canucks want to part with any prospects, um, especially if their names are Podkolzin, uh, Pod Hoglander, Lind, Rafferty, Rathbone, Yolevi, um, and then remember, Sutter has only got one more year left on his contract, and Erickson's got two more years left. Uh, depending on what, obviously, it depends on what you'd have to give up, but I'm not sure if the Canucks want to go down that route right now. However, you said, if yes, who would be a realistic player from around the league that you want to see play with Bo? Um, I've talked about a couple guys. I've talked about Anthony DeClaire playing with Horvat. Um, they, you know, they're around the same age. They've played against each other before. But I've also heard that DeClaire's defensive game isn't that good. But I wouldn't mind seeing him get a shot. And then Mike Hoffman's another one too. But, uh, you know, he's, he might come at a hefty price. He might come with a bit of baggage. But he could be a really good offensive, um, um, you know, a really good player for the Cucks. So those are the two names on uh, up front that I that I constantly think about. A lot of other guys out there, maybe Mikhail Granlin could be a fit, but maybe he's more of a third liner. I think there are a lot of guys out there that could play a third line role right now. 
But, you know, I, I'd look at Declare or Hoffman, but I simply don't know how realistic that's going to be. And lastly, Patrick Starr says this, when did you buy your first car? And do you have any tips on buying a car for the first time without getting ripped off? Well, remember, I'm 46 years old. So I bought my first car um, when I was, I think, 18, between 17 and 18 years old. The first year I, I drove my mom's Buick Riviera. For those of you that are older, you'll know what car I'm talking about. And then I actually bought um, a Honda Acura and I bought it with my own money, saved up working through, um, through the summers, through high school and things. But that was 30 years ago when things were a lot cheaper. I think now, uh, tips for buying a car now, and I can think of my son, Sean, who's 19, and my other son, Jacob, who's 17, but he doesn't need his own car yet, but Sean has his own car. Um, there's nothing wrong with buying used, especially as a first car, and especially in, during COVID time. If you're not going to be driving that much, we're not supposed to go out a lot. So, And even before COVID, Sean was really only driving to UBC and then to the bowling alley for work and to visit uh, his girlfriend, Fernanda. So really, and to church, of course. So um, any tips for buying a car for the first time without, without getting ripped off? Well, yeah, don't do it yourself. You know, get your parents to help you or get your friends to help you. Anyone who's in the car industry, I would make sure that if you're buying a used car, that you get it checked out by a mechanic first. So you know exactly what you're getting. You know exactly what type of work you have to do on that car. And But I think buying used, um, especially if you're a student or just starting out making money, um, no, no need to buy a brand new car right off the bat because your insurance is probably going to be a lot um, in itself. So there's a couple tips for you, Patrick, if that helps. Okay, Canucks fans. Thank you. Let me know. Leave a comment on any of those questions or any of those answers, I should say, with regards to prediction of when the season starts, Pacific versus Canadian division with the Winnipeg Jets, Tyler Mott, Elias Patterson scoring, or getting uh, trading Erickson or Sutter, or how to buy um, a, a new car, or buying a first car, I should say. Not necessarily new, as I pointed out. Uh, leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply to your responses, to my answers, to your questions. And otherwise, uh, wish me luck tonight bowling. And I hope that you uh, subscribe. If you haven't subscribed already, like this video if you like to as well. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. I will check in with you tomorrow morning, hopefully with a good bowling result as well. Have a great rest of the day. God bless and go Canucks go.